So after talking about simple harmonic motion vibrations, the vibrations of pendulums and springs, we are moving into different types of vibrations called waves, okay? And I know that in grade nine with Mr. Sickles, you guys have done a little bit of an introduction into waves. And in IB, we go a little bit more into calculations and understanding the cool uh, physical properties of waves and, and being able to predict their phenomena. Uh, but before we can get into that, uh, we have to just do a little bit of a review of what we already probably know from grade nine. Okay, so the objectives for today's lesson is going to be just these ones, being able to describe in words and, and drawings what waves and wave motion is in terms of vibrations. Uh, be able to identify wavelength, frequency, and period from graphs, and be able to solve problems using the wave equation where we have to be able to identify wavelength, frequency, period, and wave speed and, and relate them. Okay, So getting going, uh, we've all encountered waves in grade 9 and in life in Ghana. It's hard not to encounter waves in the ocean. They're quite strong here. Uh, but waves, ocean waves, are actually quite complicated. They're, they're not a simple, you can't describe them as a simple transverse wave or a longitudinal wave. These are words I'm using right now that I know you know in grade nine, but we'll cover in a second. They, they, they are a little bit more complicated. They're rolling and they have a little bit of both characteristics, okay? But what this wave on the left is demonstrating is that a wave propagates energy. Look at what it's doing to that boat. Okay, as the wave moves, it transfers energy from point A to point B. But the particles, the unique thing about the wave is that the particles that are transmitting the, wave, the energy are not necessarily moving from point A to point B. So energy is moving through a medium. Okay, and that's what's unique about waves. Waves are some type of a disturbance in a medium that propagates energy. That's the, the biggest picture that you can have about a wave and why we're interested in them. All right, so the definition for waves here is a wave is a disturbance. So we often see that term involved when we talk about waves. It's a disturbance in a medium okay, that travels and transfers energy and momentum from one place to another. Okay, and the direction of propagation of the wave is in the direction of energy transfer. Okay, so if that wave is moving in that direction, the energy is being transferred in that direction, despite the fact that the boat is going up and down. Okay, here below us is an example of waves generated in water when a drop of water or a rock enters a pond. Here's a good simulation. And what you can see is that here are all the particles in the water. And as soon as that disturbance happens, those particles are transmitting energy, but the particles themselves are not moving. So you can watch that energy front or that wave front propagate through the medium without actually the particles moving from point A to point B, okay? So here you would see that is a crest, okay? And along with that crest would be energy, okay? Here is just another example of waves that you would have seen as you explored. I'm sure in grade nine, you played with slinkies, springs, and strings. And when you vibrate them up and down, you would see down the string would be sent a pulse of energy Okay, but the particles are not moving, but the pulse of energy is moving. So here would be the wave moving in that direction, and so would the energy. Okay. Here's the same principle, except instead of two strings, it's just one string vibrating up and down, generating something that looks like a standing wave. Okay, you can see like the wave is standing still. We'll be learning about that later on. And on the right over here is different types of waves called electromagnetic waves. Okay, oscillating electric and magnetic fields in the form of light, okay? And that is gonna be a type of wave that we're gonna be studying very shortly, okay? But to begin our study of wave, let's just look at strings, okay? We've all played with strings and made waves move up and down the string. So here you have a string attached to the wall, okay? And if this man vibrates the string up and down really quickly, you would see this pulse of energy, okay? Like this hump that's formed in the string move in that direction, okay? and that hump that's moving is called a wave pulse. It's not a full wave, it's just, a, let's call it a crest, and that pulse is moving in that direction. So that energy is propagating towards the wall, okay? Despite the fact that the man moved the string up and down, the wave is propagating perpendicularly and along, and the energy is propagating along with it, okay? So here the person creates a pulse in the string by quickly moving it up and down, the pulse and direction of energy transferred is horizontally, and the speed of the pulse would depend on how much tension there is in that rope. If that rope was pretty slack and loose, you would see that that pulse would barely move. But if we tighten that rope against the wall and then induce a pulse, it would move very, very quickly. Okay? If we use chain versus a light 
rope, the pulse would move a lot slower in the chain than it would in the light rope. And that's also because the mass would be heavier. It would require a lot more energy to transmit that disturbance. Okay? Another interesting thing that we would see when we have strings reflecting pulses off of a wall, if I had a free end, like a little loop over here on the wall, instead of tying it to the wall, you would see that that pulse would reflect up. It wouldn't flip over. It would just come back just exactly the same way it came in. On the other hand, if I tied that rope and attached it to the wall, when I sent the pulse, it would reflect in the opposite direction. So that's what we know about waves in the strings. Okay. All right, now what do we know about graphs of waves? So if this man vibrates up and down repeatedly, rather than sending one pulse, but sends a variety of them, he would generate something that looks like this. Here is a pulse, okay, and here's, and here's another bit of the pulse, okay? So we can imagine this pulse reflects off of the wall and comes back, that's from the reflection and that's from the pulse coming in, okay? And what he's generating is a waveform, okay? This up and down uh, type of pattern that would be in that string. Okay. Well, when we if we graph the displacement in the y component of that string, this is imagine that that line here would be the string flat horizontally, and if I move that string up and down, and I graph the displacement in the y direction, we would make this type of a graph. We've seen that in simple harmonic motion. That's like a sine or a cosine graph. Okay. So the distance between the crests would be the wavelength or the full cycle. The wavelength is a full cycle, as we as we talked about before. So. The wavelength in meters is, is from crest to crest, or from trough to trough, or from a point where it comes back in the exact same position, one complete cycle. Okay, and if I look at that, I was, I was talking about this as the crest. That's actually the amplitude of the wave. We've already learned that term, amplitude. And that would be the trough of the wave, where it's negative amplitude. That's positive amplitude and negative amplitude. Here's my wavelength. And then if we did a displacement over time graph, you would, like we did with simple harmonic motion, okay, the time that it would take to complete one full cycle, here to here, is the period, okay? And, and as we have learned before, the relationship between period and frequency, one divided by the period is equal to my frequency. That's how many cycles per second, which is measured in hertz, okay? So the wave equation that you, the main big wave equation that we're looking at is understanding the relationship between the speed of that wave, how fast that wave propagates in a medium, okay? So how fast does that pulse go down the rope? So what, how does that relate to these variables, okay? The equation looks like this. The speed of a wave is equal to the wavelength times the frequency, or the speed of a wave is equal to wavelength over period, okay? This makes a lot of sense. The wavelength over period makes a lot of sense because wavelength is measured in meters. Okay. Ah. Wavelength is measured in meters. Period is measured in seconds. And speed is meters per second. So if I looked at that, the speed of the wave would be in meters per second. That makes complete sense. On the other hand, with the other equation, meters per second is speed, which is equal to meters times one over seconds, that's frequency is one over the period, that's also meters per second. Okay, so if I had the frequency of a wave, okay, how many waves pass me in a second is the frequency, and I had its wavelength, if I multiply those two variables together, I'll get the speed of the wave. If I knew the speed of the wave and the wavelength, I can calculate the frequency. Okay, what you'll learn when we talk about waves is the frequency of a wave is its fingerprint. We often refer to the frequency of waves to determine what kind of wave it is. Okay, and that's it for the first, that first little lesson. So just to do a quick calculation, if the speed of sound is 340 meters per second, and I'm emitting a wavelength of, let's say, 10 meters, what would the frequency be? Okay, well, 340 meters per second divided by a 10 meter wavelength is going to be 34 hertz. Okay, and our ears can hear between 20 and 20,000 hertz. So that would be a very, very low sound, okay? So this equation is very, very simple to use, but you have to be able to recognize those variables inside of a graph. And you'll have a lot of practice with that in the dot points this week.